Hi everybody, uh, we are going to go ahead and get started with uh, the female reproductive system. So let's go ahead and look at the anatomy of the female reproductive system. Uh, so we have uh, what we identified as paired ovaries uh, that are responsible for uh, production of the ovocyte or your egg, and they are also responsible for releasing two main sex hormones in female, which are uh, estrogen and progesterone. The ovaries are connected to these tubular structure you see right here. Uh, these tubes are called uterine tube or fallopian tube and basically responsible for transporting the oocyte uh, away from the ovary and into the next structure, which is the uterus. <clears throat> so uterus is a muscular structure, basically where the um, fetus or embryo starts to grow. And it's, uh, if there is no pregnancy, uh, it would be the sun site for menstrual cycle. Uh, the opening of the cervix, sorry, the opening of the uterus is the structure referred to as the cervix, and cervix opens up to the muscular tube, which is referred to as the vagina. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these structures one at a time. So ovaries are these, again, almond-shaped structures, which are located within the pelvic cavity. You can see kind of the, uh, the lining for the pelvic bone right here. Uh, so ovaries are within the pelvic cavity. The main function, as we mentioned, is production of oocyte. Uh, they're also responsible for production of the two main sex hormone, estrogen and progesterone. And um, uh, they are also, by releasing these hormones, support uh, possible uh, developing embryo if there was a fertilization. Now, to keep the ovaries and reproductive system in place, uh, we have four uh, sets of ligaments. Uh, these ligaments are uh, one that extends from the uh, ovary to the wall of the uterus. Uh, this is referred to as the ovarian ligament. You have one that literally connects the fallopian tube on either side and suspends the uh, reproductive organs. This is known as the suspensory ligament. We have this sheath-like structure that expands from the lateral aspect of the uterus um, that is referred to as the broad ligament. And running through the broad ligament, you have another ligament, which you see right here, kind of more tubular structure, that is the round ligament. <clears throat> so uh, when the ovary releases the egg uh, from uh, the structure, uh, that oocyte is um, uh, picked up by the fallopian tube, which you can see right here, and uh, it gets transferred to the uterus if it's been fertilized. Now, a couple of points about this. As you can see, here is your ovary and here is the fallopian tube. There is no direct connection between these two structures. So uh, what happens is as the oocyte or the egg gets released from the ovary, it actually gets released into the, uh, uh, into the pelvic cavity. The process of releasing that egg is called ovulation. So at that point, you have these finger-like extensions at the tip of the uh, fallopian tubes, which create a wave motion and through this wave motion, they can grab the egg and bring the egg into the fallopian tube. Now, as the egg is going through this kind of a curvature of the fallopian tube, you see right here, which is referred to as the ampulla, um, this is basically where the oocyte or egg can meet a sperm, if there is any sperm present, and that would be the site for fertilization, as an egg basically fertilizing a sperm sorry, a sperm fertilizing an egg. So a couple of key points again, fimbries are the way that you uh, basically bring the egg into the fallopian tube. Ovaries and fallopian tubes are not directly connected. And then lastly, the location within the fallopian tubes where the actual fertilization takes place is referred to as the ampulla. Now, if there is a fertilized egg, the fertilized egg moves through the fallopian tube and gets embedded inside the wall of the uterus. And that embryo can develop into a fetus. Uh, however, if there is no 
pregnancy, uh, then uterus would be used as a site of um, menstrual cycle or menstruation uh, as a woman undergoes their uh, regular cycle. Uh, the most uh, common type of uh, or the, large, the thickest layer of the uterus is made up of a smooth muscle. And we'll talk about that in just a second and how that reacts to a hormone called oxytocin. <clears throat> so when we take a look at the uterus, and here is basically the depiction of our uterus, uh, what we have is three separate layers. We have the inner lining of the uterus, uh, which you can see in kind of a darker pink color. Uh, this is referred to as the endometrium. Remember, endo means inside. So this is the internal mucous lining, which is highly vascularized. And again, if there is a embryo planted, implanted, then it would be the site where the placenta starts to develop. However, if there is no pregnancy, it would, this layer would be shed uh, every month uh, during the completion of the menstrual cycle or the beginning of menstrual cycle. The second layer, which you can see in the light pink color, uh, this is called the myometrium. Remember the word myo means muscle. So myometrium is the thickest layer of the uterine wall, which is made up basically is made up of a smooth muscle. Uh, it is sensitive to a hormone called oxytocin, which basically contracts during the childbirth and allows the, the, the fetus to be moved and pushed out of the uterine tube and out of the body. The outermost lining of the uterus is a thin layer of connective tissue, which is referred to as the perimetrium or serosa. Now, the opening of the uterus is protected by a fibrous a ring of um, fibrous ring referred to as the cervix, which you can see right here. Cervix has two narrowing, one that is closer to the uterus called the internal os, and one that is closest to the vagina called the external os. In terms of the next structure, we have the vagina. Vagina is a muscular tube. It is important during childbirth and intercourse, basically gaining access or giving access to sperm to the female reproductive system. And typically, you will see a <clears throat> vascular covering on the uh, beginning of the vagina, which is known as the hymen. The external genitalia in case of female, uh, we have the outer lining or lips, uh, which is referred to as labia majora. Labia basically means lips. And this structure is homologous to the skin around the testes, which we learn called the scrotum. The inner lips, which are highly vascularized and uh, uh, referred to as the labia minora, which covers uh, the erectile tissue, uh, which is homologous to the erectile tissue of the penis, called the clitoris. So you have again uh, labia majora, labia minora, and then um, covering the labia minora on the uh, superior aspect of the reproductive system, you have the clitoris. Please do note if you're looking at this picture that in case of female reproductive system, the opening for the urethra, which we call the urethra opening or orifice, is separated from the vaginal opening, which you see right here. When compared to male, male had one opening for both the reproductive and urinary system, which we identified as penile or a spongy urethra. Now, when we think about a women reproductive system, we have two cycles one cycle that is happening within the ovaries and the other cycle that happening within the uterus. So let's go ahead and talk about the ovarian cycle first. Ovarian cycle has three phases, follicular phase, ovulation, and luteal phase. So 
follicular phase happens typically within the first 14 days of the uterine cycle and it itself has multiple steps. Uh, first of all, what does the word follicle imply? So every oocyte that we have in a female uh, ovary is surrounded by a structure called the follicle. So as the uh, follicular phase advances, both the follicle as well as the oocyte undergo changes or undergo maturation. So during the follicular phase, what you actually start with is what we identify as primordial follicle which is basically an immature structure. It, uh, it is, um, really doesn't have a mature follicle or uh, a mature oocyte. As we mentioned, both of these need to undergo development. Now again, as time passes by, primordial follicle becomes primary follicle as they both start to develop. They continue to grow and develop to form a secondary follicle and by the final stages of the follicular phase, they have formed something called a mature follicle or a graphene follicle. This includes a mature oocyte as well as a lining of follicular cells. And I'll show you this in just a second. So at this point, when you have what we identify again as mature or graphene follicle, the oocyte part gets released from the ovary during a process called ovulation. So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> so again, look, you have primordial follicle to start with. The structure starts to get bigger. You're forming the uh, primary follicle. Primary follicle becomes secondary follicle. And secondary follicle becomes a mature or graphene follicle. Notice that there is major difference from what you start to what you're ending with. Now, at this time, you have the process of ovulation, right? So ovulation is the second phase. So the second phase of ovulation cycle, which is typically happens in uh, halfway through your cycle, is when an oocyte uh, gets released into uh, the, you know, the pelvic cavity. And uh, uh, here is what you have. Uh, each uh, egg that gets released, if it's done properly, gets picked up by the fimbri, which are these finger-like extensions you see right here, and then travel up through the fallopian tube. Kind of reminder of what we learned. This curvature we have here is referred to as the ampulla. And again, notice this is the site where the sperm has swim to and it will be fertilizing an egg. So that's the location for fertilization. Now, immediately after fertilization, the uh, oocyte starts to change and divide. So you can see that the cell is dividing and uh, eventually it would reach the, the wall of the uterus and it gets implanted inside the inner lining of the uterus, which is the endometria. Please do know that there is a condition called ectopic pregnancy uh, where um, the mm, fertilized egg does not properly move uh, out of the fallopian into the, the uterus. So it basically uh, creates a blockage within the fallopian tube. And if it's not treated um, and if it's not removed, uh, it can uh, lead to death as it will rupture the fallopian tube and cause internal bleeding. Now, the third phase of the ovarian cycle is associated with the leftover structure from the follicular phase. So right here again, kind of depicting, you have your primordial follicle, became primary follicle, became secondary follicle, and then graphene follicle. The, graph the graphene follicle ruptured and released the oocyte during the process of ovulation. However, notice that these follicular cells remain behind and are forming this new structure you see in yellow called the corpus luteum. Now, what is the function of the corpus luteum? It is responsible for secreting continuous levels of estrogen and progesterone and 
basically preparing the uterus for a possible pregnancy. Now, please do note that, again, these two hormone, estrogen and progesterone, are going to help thicken the endometrium, the inner lining where the uh, embryo was implanted, and it's going to help develop the placenta. But what if there is no pregnancy? In such scenarios, the corpus luteum starts to degrade, the levels of the hormone significantly decline, and the structure goes from what we identify as corpus luteum to corpus albicans. And this is basically the third phase. So if you wanna kind of make a notation for yourself, basically, when we're talking about the ovary, the phases of ovary, <clears throat> Switch to pen. So the phases of the ovarian cycle are three phases. So you have one, two, three, four. And what we're depicting in red are your follicular phase. Then what you change to is this phase you have right here, which is only one phase, and that is known as ovulation. And the third part of this process is what we identify as luteal phase, which has two phases, one and two, if there is no pregnancy. And this is again known as luteal phase. Uh, I would strongly suggest for you guys to watch the YouTube videos that I have added or embedded into your links uh, so you get a better idea of um, what this process looks in an animation format. So up to this point, we are looking at the changes that are happening inside the ovary. So what are the changes that are happening inside the uterus, which basically gives us our menstrual cycle? So uterine cycle is made up of three phases. Uh, the phase first part of the uterine cycle is basically getting rid of the old endometrium for a possible, and basically getting rid of the old so you can prepare the new one. So this usually happens about the first five days of the cycle, which we identify as uh, menstrual phase. And again, this is basically when a woman will have quote unquote her period, uh, you're getting rid of the old endometrium. Now, up to uh, from that point on, from day six to day 14, uh, this is referred to as the proliferative phase. Again, proliferative means that you're going to allow the endometrium to be rebuilt for a possible pregnancy. Um, do note that this day 14 is also the day that basically you may have uh, the process of fertilization happen halfway through the ovarian cycle. Um, and then uh, secretory phase, which is the, the third phase of the uterine cycle, is basically the remainder of the time, day 15 to 28, where the endometrium continue to uh, be uh, thickened for the possible implantation of the embryo. Please do note that if there is pregnancy, then the hormone levels stays high, uh, allowing the development of placenta, However, if there is no pregnancy, you go back to the first phase, uh, which is the menstrual phase, and repeat the cycle over again. Um, here is just a depiction again. Uh, notice during the first 14 days, right before ovulation, you have got rid of the old uh, membrane, right? And then you creating a new one all the way to A14. And then after the ovulation, you're really kind of picking up and you are building that endometrium to the thickest level it can be. Uh, but if there is no pregnancy, corpus luteum and corpus albicans or degradation of the corpus luteum becomes corpus albicans. And because at this phase, there is a very little hormone in terms of estrogen and progesterone, the uh, activity <clears throat> Sorry, the thickness of the endometrium starts to be uh, removed or degraded, which returns you back to the beginning phase, which is the menstrual cycle. Um, now, I added this slide because I think it's important as women to be aware of uh, some of the changes or um, 
that you have to be concerned about in terms of your health. Um, so one of the things that the doctors recommend for a woman between the age of 21 to 65 to do every three years uh, is a pap smear um, to check for the possible cervical cancer. Uh, so this test uh, is a very simple test. Uh, what they do is they take a swab of the cervix and they, that collects a, a group of cells and they basically observe this for any abnormalities. If uh, there is any abnormality within these cells, uh, they may require to complete the process called biopsy. And uh, through that process, basically, they check to see if there is any sort of growth or abnormality within the cervix. Uh, it is something that women need to take seriously, uh, especially if you do have a history of cervical cancer or ovarian cancer in your family. Uh, there are individuals that are at a higher risk, like women who have uh, HIV infection. Uh, if you have a weakened immune system, either as a result of a medical condition, such as HIV, uh, or uh, if you are a smoker. Uh, th these are uh, common risk factors, not the only ones. Of course, environment also plays a major role. Um, if women are undergoing hormonal therapy, they also may have a high risk of developing ovarian cancer um, or cervical cancer. So it is something to talk to your doctor uh, if you have not done the procedure. I think that's about it. So this was our last lecture for the semester. Um, if you guys do have any questions, please make sure you bring them up with you during our office hours, my office hours. Thank you.